Reaper Man here, and today I am playing my absolute favorite Neo Geo game. This is actually one of the first Neo Geo games I played. Oh gosh, this would have been back in the late 90s somewhere. I didn't get too much time with Neo Geos before then. And I'm not really sure why it's my favorite. Always pick Japan, by the way, in Japanese games. So part of me always likes the people look like ants perspective of top-down anything, top-down racers, top-down shmups, that kind of thing. It's why I, I really don't generally care for the side-scrolling shmups, so, and tend to really dig the top, uh, the, the vertically scrolling ones, because I really like seeing all the neat scenery. And scenery is a good portion of why I play these games. Uh, it also... It's not a bullet hell. It, uh, it handles fairly predictably. I like that the levels are randomized. It does all kinds of stuff right. And it's, it's not a complicated game. It's just a simple, by the numbers, mid 90s shmup. And it just nails it. It's got a sequel on Neo Geo that really, really sucks. It's got a bad um, level to boss ratio in it. Uh, this one's pretty good. Also, the uh, the sequel has a really exploity bonus mechanic in the bonus level that um, you might as well just not even play the rest of the game. Just make sure to pick the right bonus level every time. We just gotta deal with this boss here quick. I shouldn't need any bombs on him. It's a level one boss. Since I don't continue in Neo Geo games, I get quite a lot of experience with the old level one boss if you catch my drift. <coughs> But what's kind of nice is uh, levels 2, 3, and 4 are randomized, and then you come back and do Australia. <clears throat> Australia tends to be about as far as I can make it in this game. Uh, I think my absolute high score in this game is like 700 and some thousand points. Okay, so this is Paris. This is uh, a good level to get next because it can be kind of a pain later on. Uh, yes, the levels still get harder even though they're randomized. So... So there is that. You know, level 2 is always harder there, or easier than level 3 kind of deal. Ugh. You also have to be conscious of when you grab power-ups in this game, because the very highest level of power-up is on a timer. So to my knowledge, this level doesn't have any of those little, uh, little bonus dollars, bonus money signs anywhere. Which is a shame, because those are a great way to get points, and a great way to um, build extra lives. And you want to make sure you grab those as close to the top of the screen as you can, so you can get the full 10,000 points. Actually, if you can't get the 10,000 points, probably best just to abandon that one and uh, set yourself up for the next one. There's usually multiples near each other. I am... It's not doing too well here. Alright, give me the bomb. So again, this is not a bullet hell. It's just a simple straight by the numbers uh, shmup. But there's a fair amount of stuff going on because it's still a Neo Geo game. And I'm trying to get them together so I can use up my bombs. Basically, I don't want to die with my bombs. And even though there isn't too much going on on screen at the same time, there's... Still more than enough to kill me three times. Okay, the next level is a little bonus mission. This is a great way to uh, get your one up. If, for example, you got Paris, which is almost impossible to get your one up. So one ups happen at 200,000 points with the default settings. I play on the default settings, which means difficulty level four, and the bonus at 200,000. Now, whenever I see Neo Geos set up in arcades, oftentimes they are set to difficulty level 8, and I just can't figure that out. I mean, it's rare enough to see a real one at an arcade, but to set it up so hard, I mean, arcades are generally empty. Ooh. Here's one of my favorite parts of this game. You can blow up the, uh, the World Trade Center and get some money out of it. It's uh, actually, uh, they, they saw the future there. It was indeed blown up by a military jet, and that military jet was, of course, being piloted by an intelligent dolphin, just like it is in this game. Well, mine's not the intelligent dolphin. I picked the Japanese guy. But yes, one of the characters is a dolphin. One of the characters is a baby. 
Then there's like a like a older sister younger sister combo in there. It's all very neat. Ooh, gotta get these. Darn. That. I don't know why, but I am just not able to do the damage that I think I should be able to do here. And yes, I did some recording before this to get the easy losses out of the way, so to speak. Some of them were terrible. Dying on level one? Jeez, that's bad. Look at that. Okay, now I move on to this uh, jungle stage. And this jungle stage is not ideal to get into this position on. Um, because this is the jungle stage as hard as it can get. And I usually like to get bonus points from it. Because uh, there's a lot of those little money signs. Bah. Bah. Really? I suppose I should have seen that one coming. Alright, let's put another credit into this guy. Get through level one again here. So for different characters, we've got, uh, you know, there's a dolphin. There's a uh, guy with the parrot. And nothing looks more American than that guy, I tell you what. And, and of course the robot, because nothing says America like robot. Okay, the idol singer does say Japan a little bit. Ah! Apparently now I'm Mau Mau. I don't remember what Mau Mau's move is. I I don't remember what her, her secondary gun is, but I believe she freezes time, which is actually kind of handy. Watch, I'm going to be totally wrong. I'll use one up on the first boss to see. Oh, oh, oh. 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. Already it doesn't seem like I'm doing even the damage that the other guy was doing. Rip, rip. One, two, get back a little, jump up, and fly straight back. Then destroy the two castle towers flying at me. Grab one. Oh, it's this one. Okay. Okay, we can dig with this. Yeah, we can, we can, we can do this. One weird little graphical corruption is that's discolored up there until the boss fully forms up. So I think that's intentional. It was outside of the uh, TV safe border, so to speak. It's just one of those little things that kind of bugs you when you spend kind of, frankly, a lot of money on a high-end game system. As I was talking at work, I work with a lot of younger people, uh, military people actually. And uh, I was talking to one of them, and he asked me if I had an arcade machine, which of course I do. I have a bunch of stuff for it. And he asked me if I made it myself, and I told him, no, it's real. And he had absolutely no concept ugh, of what I was talking to or talking about. I should probably concentrate a little more on this game. He just assumed that I guess all arcade machines were handmade by some schmo. But he may never have played a real arcade game, actually, because even arcades now have a lot of garbage emulation in them. And I thought the uh, that multi-cade stuff was bad, but man, some of the stuff these days doesn't even work right. I actually went to this local arcade, uh, I think it was called Sea Cave Arcade or something. I don't think they had a single real machine in them. And nothing played even close to right, like the speed was all off. Boom, boom. They had one that may have been real. The wife and I were uh, trying to have a, a bit of fun playing Miss Pac-Man. The wife loves Miss Pac-Man, by the way. She can school me all day long on it. Uh, and I consider myself, you know, fairly okay. Ha ha ha. Oop. That's terrible. Anyway, the big deal with this machine, we couldn't tell if it was real or not because the reason it wasn't playing right was the, um, 
They had a joystick in there that was set to 8-way, and I mean, how little goddamn work does it take to turn the restrictor sidewise and make it a 4-way stick, you know? And, and the only thing I can think of is the, the guy running the place, the attendant, who seemed to be the owner, um, just didn't... It seemed like he appreciated arcade games, but it didn't seem like he had a lot of experience with them. Like me, I suck at arcade games. I don't mind... Well, I don't mind sucking at them. First off, I mean, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose, and I figure when I look at my stats, if I get five minutes of credit, I'm doing pretty good. There's a few I can go longer on. I really like the baby print there. This game's got a lot of little Easter eggs like that. Ah, oh, 2,000? Okay, 10,000, 10,000. And if I recall, these, um... At least the sequel to this one, uh, Arrow Fighters 3, but maybe also Arrow Fighters 2, really goes off the rails with, uh, you know, craziness. Um, but I never get far enough to see it. I can only really get, when I'm not sitting here yakking, I can only really get to Australia. Boom. Boom. So yeah, one thing I do like about this is the randomized levels. So after the first level, the next three are randomized. And then you go to Australia, and then I can't remember if it randomizes or not past that. Oh, mostly because I can't get there. But yeah, uh, I believe these games get quite crazy uh, after that. I know in Arrow Fighters 3, one of the bosses is a Mahjong tile in a schoolgirl outfit. It, it goes absolutely nuts. And unfortunately, Arrow Fighters 3 starts going nuts so early that I can see part of it. See, I like the parts of Metal Slug where it's still kind of normal and it's not blowing away aliens helping the bad guys kind of thing. I, I don't know. I, I just like the, the, the normalcy of the shmup, just the whole predictability of it. Okay, here comes the World Trade Center again. Let's get some monies. Boom, boom. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, I was uh, I was playing around with emulation myself, especially arcade emulation, and I, I kept noticing the, the warnings on the games to say, oh, you're not allowed to play this if you don't really own it thing, and I kept thinking to myself, well, who would own any number of arcade games? And now here I am with, oh gosh, over a hundred arcade games in my collection. Uh, that's not counting the doubles, and yes, you start to get doubles. And you don't get doubles for good reasons either. Like sometimes uh, I find myself just buying stuff because I think, huh, can't let that guy get that good of a deal on it. I have to, you know, uh, absolutely no use for a second copy of a game. But sure, why not? And then you pick up lots, especially the Neo Geo games. And then you you always seem to get a bu a. a Puzzle Bobble, Bust a Move, whatever they're called in this region. I honestly don't even remember anymore. But yeah, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of doubles of Bust a Move. Ooh. And I actually got a lot of doubles of King of Fighters '98 and '99. Interestingly, the reason I have uh, doubles of King of Fighters '98 is I was having trouble finding one that just just worked. So my first one was legitimate, but it was Korean. And apparently, in King of Fighters 98, the Koreans didn't care for the Japanese voices and removed a lot of them from the game. So, that was a little distracting. Or am I thinking of 1999? No, I think I, I must be thinking of the rap at the beginning of 1999. It's 98 or 99 that has the rap. I don't know. I'm actually not very good at fighting games. I don't play them very much. One that I really want to get, though, is Matra Melee. Because that game has a really interesting kind of... Because I play games for the scenery sometimes, and Matra Melee has... The backgrounds are all kind of music... They, they go along to the music that's in the background, 
So there's it's it's fully voiced, and there's either people on stage singing or people singing in like a computer store and dancing along, or a couple singing a duet, things like that. And it's all happening in the background and in the audio, and it's just really neat that they combined it. So apparently, Matra Melee is somewhat related. It's it's a Power Instinct game. It's got the Power Instinct license. But it's also got Billy and Jimmy in it from Double Dragon. And I guess the story behind that is there's a Neo Geo Double Dragon that was, I guess, based on the movie. And uh, there was a sequel to it called Rage of Dragons, which I don't know how official that is. And then they just kept Billy and Jimmy along. I think there's also some other characters in it, too, along with the Power Instinct type people. So I don't have Matrimonely, but I do have Rage of Dragons, and there's there's only one part in it. There's one part in it that ruins the whole game for me. And that's the, um, there's this level where they're at a nightclub. And it really bothers me that the people on the left side of the nightclub are mirrored from the people on the right side. I mean, this is a Neo Geo game. You shouldn't be cheaping out on the megabits here, you know? <laughs> Especially not when it's like a, a six, seven hundred megabit game, I think. But it just it just ruins the whole game for me. The rest of the game is is fairly decent. Ooh, got a high score at least. So anyway, this has been a look at my absolute favorite Neo Geo game, and uh, it's it's probably on everybody's you know middle of the pack. But it's it's just my favorite, not because it's flashy or anything, but just because it's it's so standard and it's so representative of how how shmups were at this time. Also, if you ever have a chance to pick up the uh, the Super Nintendo version of Hero Fighters 1 for cheap, please do that. Apparently it's super expensive. It's actually more expensive to get Hero Fighters for the Super Nintendo many times more than it is to get the arcade board. And the only reason I haven't gotten the arcade board, because it's, it's actually a full-on JAMA board, is uh, it's, it's vertical, I believe, and um, at least right now I don't know of any scalers that'll let me to rotate an image and, and put it up on my big screen here and that's that's kind of dumb that's just something that that my frame meister there should be able to handle in my opinion anyway anyway this has been uh this has been a just a, just a look at my favorite neo geo game <laughs>